I wouldn't say it was a spectacular day at the Magnus Invitational Online Tournament. It was extremely hard fought. But, well, we did have one Armageddon game which actually really is worth looking at. There's a very nice trap here. So, in the match between the Chinese player Ding Liren and Maxime Vachilegrave, of course, two of the candidates, they drew their four rapid play games. So they went into the Armageddon. So Vachilegrave chose black and that means he had four minutes against Ding Liren's five minutes, but uh, black gets draw odds. So Ding Liren has to go for a win. Let's see how things went. Well, this is interesting that uh, Vasilikov once again chose the Slav. Not his usual opening with black against d4. Of course, he is arguably the world's greatest expert on the Grunfeld. Now, in this position, well, basically there are a couple of normal moves or three normal moves. e6, you can take on c4, which is kind of the classic Slav. You can even play a6, the so-called Chebonenko variation. But Maxime went for bishop f5. Now, this is well known to be inaccurate. So I don't know whether he was just, well, who knows whether he's just un, a little bit unfamiliar with the opening or whether he wanted to try something a bit different and was just kind of experimenting. I don't know. That's for him to say. But the reason this is known to be inaccurate is because after taking here and pawn takes pawn, then queen b3 straight away exploits the fact that the bishop has moved away from c8 at an early stage. This is problematic because if queen b6, now here is the problem that actually white wins a pawn with knight d5, and if queen takes, you throw in a little in-between check, Zwischenschach, and white wins a pawn. So this is the basic problem that queen b3 upsets black's system here. So pawn takes pawn was played by Ding. I'm sure he's very familiar with this position. And Maxime played it knight takes d5 pretty quickly. So maybe, you know, this had been prepared by him. I don't know. Maybe it was just off the top of his head. And once again, queen b3 is a very sensible move, exploiting the fact that b7 is already uh, a little bit vulnerable. So queen b6 played by Maxime. And Ding took on d5. Well, this is definitely the way to go. If queen takes queen, then white flicks in this check on c7. The king comes up. You recapture the queen. The knight is taken. Now, material is even, but actually white gets a very pleasant initiative here. The king is not in a good position. White is ready to play e4. Let's not rule out knight c4 and a potential uh, check on b6. Basically, white is doing very well there. Nice initiative. So knight takes d5 has just been played. And uh, Maxime simply recaptured. And white takes a pawn. Now, maybe this is what the Frenchman was bargaining on, that white has to find some accurate moves in this position. Because although white has, has grabbed this pawn, of course, he's a little bit behind in development. And this is getting tricky. You know, I'd like to ask you, if you were playing with the white pieces here, how would you cope with black's activity here? White's king is a long way from getting castled, whereas black is almost there with bishop b4 check, for example. Um, but also the big problem for white is the fact that this knight is about to come into b4 and then into c2. So it's not so clear 
and in a blitz game, tricky. But Ding was playing pretty quickly. Knight b4. I mean, I'm really intrigued to know how much knowledge of this variation uh, Maxime had, actually. But perhaps nothing. Perhaps he was improvising. I really don't know. It's hard to say. So knight b4. This looks absolutely terrifying. Knight c2 check, obviously a threat. But remarkably, white can actually just find a way out of this with queen a4 check. And that is very very difficult for black now. Um, I, looking on my database, I found that this has actually been played before. And in that game, black played king e7. Now, in in this game, uh, Maxime played king d8. We'll look at that in a second. Let me just have a very quick look at king e7. And knight e5 is a nice move, threatening queen d7 check. And this should be winning for white it's but this is quite tricky actually I think this is black's best because although white is going to win material here it yeah it, it's actually not that clear this is a bit of a mess it has to be said uh, it's very very complicated this is best play and the knight takes the rook in the corner now after a bit, this knight is going to be taken and white should have a winning position there. But I think you can see it's messy. Anyway, we're a long way from the game. Queen a4 check. So uh, we've just been looking at king e7, but Maxime played king d8 very quickly, actually. Understandable. I mean, king e7 is not a a beautiful move blocking the bishop but I think it is better than the game continuation and now bishop d2 now that is awkward very awkward indeed because that bishop is looking over here so well here rook c8 is probably best but but knight e5 gives white a good position anyway knight c2 check was played and obviously this is the critical move and this is this is a funny case where we've just seen that probably black's best move was king e7 blocking that bishop and here the best move is king e2 blocking that bishop here and the reason is that if king d1 then black has time to take here on a1 because bishop c2 check is threatened winning that queen so white doesn't have time to play bishop a5 himself. So it's incredible. The most natural move, natural looking move, king d1 is actually a mistake. But king e2 is a very strong move. And here, well, I think it's very difficult. You know, black could exchange queens with queen a6, but then rook c1 just leaves white I think actually just a winning position. Pawn up. Um, this looks vulnerable. Uh, that knight really isn't well. I suppose it can escape, but it's just it's just better for white. Anyway, Maxime went all in. Queen takes b2. Um, but this is absolutely hopeless. Knight e5 threatens checkmate in one move. Uh, I mean, it's only, at the moment, it's only white's queen and knight attacking. Uh, it's, it's such a curious situation. It's as though black's pieces have kind of flooded um, to the other side of the board um, and, and leaving these sort of gaping holes, gaping weaknesses behind. It's a curious position. And now if the king tries to head for the hills, then the queen sweeps in and actually... This is going to be checkmate before very long. Uh, it doesn't save black in any way. So knight e5 has just been played. b5, queen a5 check. King c8 doesn't make any difference. Queen a6 is very strong there. King e8 played. And now queen c7 was the final move of the game. There really is no defense here you can see 
There are no great checks at the other end of the board. Um, white threatens queen d7 mate for starters. And yeah, no defense. If bishop e7, we can just cut back, step back. King comes here and mate on d8. Let's go to the very end. I always like to show a checkmating position. It's very final, very definite. Well, a really curious Armageddon game. I honestly don't know how to explain that. It looked like Maxime was on tilt. But it's curious because they'd played out these four really tough games before then. And actually, you know, they matched each other really well. Um, and this was just a complete collapse. So I don't know what's going on. Anyway, in the other match, uh, Yan Yapomnishi defeated uh, Anish Giri. So that leaves the scores at the top. Magnus Carlsen, after three rounds, Magnus Carlsen, eight points. Hikaru Nakamura, seven points. Ding Liren, six. MVL Nepo Caruana on five points. And, well, yeah, the rest. Ali, Ali Reza and Giri uh, not doing well in the tournament. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And do consider supporting us on patreon.com or PayPal. You'll find the links in the description there. Thanks for watching.